So um, what our project um, as part of the LPP um, suite of projects was on um, challenging basically autumn, uh, challenging spring lambing um, in our summer rainfall zone. So um, it's the traditional time of lambing and um, really that's the time when the, the lambs are born into a worm filled pastures, um, barber's pole worm particularly um, can affect their production and you have to um, put lots of um, inputs into treatments and also flies, uh, fly strike. So we thought um, that we would like to come up with a project which um, looked at um, challenging that and coming up with an alternate time. So it's an autumn lambing, um, autumn lambing that we um, decided that we'd look at and combining that with a dual purpose crop to fill that winter feed gap because as you know in um, these cold environments it's the winter feed gap that we really need to, to try and fill. So um, we had a modeler working for us, computer modeler that is, and, um, and she basically put together all the climate data and, um, and worm, um, worm data and fly data and, and came up with the time that was best to lamb. So, um, so she um, developed this model and then basically we set up a trial to test a model. So um, our spring lambing was going to be in the traditional autumn, uh, in, in the traditional August, September, and our autumn lambing was going to be in April, May. So we set up a, a strip plot system. There was eight strip plots and they had 20 uh, ewes in each and they were running at a DSC of 10 DSC. And they spent all of their life in that, in that strip plot. So there were um, four scenarios. So there was the um, spring lambing with um, pasture only, spring lambing with dual purpose crop and pasture. And then there was the autumn lambing with pasture only and autumn lambing with dual purpose crops and um, pasture only. So those four scenarios were tested and our pastures uh, that we used were mainly a phalaris and clover mix with some rye grass as well. And the, um, we added some legumes at the beginning of the trial, um, but basically we um, decided that the established pasture was um, good enough to continue with. So the, um, the crops that we used were canola, the Edimax variety, and wheat, the Manning variety. And they were chosen um, using the advice of agronomists and um, all the others in the LPP team. So um, the, the sheep remained in these plots, as I said, and they lambed in there and they raised their lambs. The lambs stayed in there until they were sold off to the abattoirs once they reached um, the right weights. And so um, each day, oh, not every day, thank goodness, um, I, three times a week we would head out into the paddock and we'd assess the pastures. And we do that just um, simply by um, giving them a rating of one to five, one being no pasture, um, five being ample pasture. And when the pastures uh, went down to around about a three, we'd start um, deciding that we'd move the, move the sheep. So we rotationally grazed these um, strip plots. Um, there were 0.5 hectares each of the plots and we moved them through their strip using an electric fence system, which was um, a Gallagher um, single line um, pull out system, which worked quite well for the ewes, not so well with the crossbred lambs that they had. Um, and we were able to um, manage the pastures um, and so some of the, um, so what we, uh, when we moved the um, sheep, we would measure the pastures using a pasture meter, um, which is basically, um, for those who don't know, a, um, a disc that you go along and um, plonk through the um, pasture. And, um, and we used a, a GPS, one of those, so that we could develop a plot of the, of the pasture. So we'd take a measurement when the sheep went into a, pl into a plot 
and then we take a measurement when the sheet went out of the plot so that we're able to um, figure out how much feed they'd eaten during that time over the number of days they're in there. So um, some of the major challenges that we uh, faced during this trial, um, so we began in 2019 and, um, and all, as all of you know and has been spoken about previously, um, that was the drought that really, really hurt. So um, we had to hadn't hand feed all of our sheep and lambs during that time um, and sacrifice some of the paddocks. However, our dual purpose crops did actually do really well during the drought still. Um, particularly the canola was exceptionally um, resist, resilient and um, when we managed to um, graze the canola um, really quite well and the lambs did really well that year on the canola. Um, and so we saved a fair bit of money that year on feed for the lambs that were raised on that canola. So that was an interesting finding so far, but we didn't really want the drought to have to prove that. Um, so when we're grazing the um, canola, um, lamb, uh, sheep grazing on canola can be um, considered dangerous because of the nitrates and um, changes it can cause and the sodium potassium levels. So we provided them always with an alternative to the canola. Um, it was in either in the form of pasture or hay. And we also um, gave them um, ad lib salt and mineral mix so that they um, made sure that they were healthy. And we, in our first um, grazing of the canola, we, we had lambs on there and we um, took blood samples at the beginning when they went on and then blood samples at the end and had them analysed and they didn't change in their um, levels of nitrates and um, sodium and potassium. So um, I think that it was the, the trick of the, um, the mineral mix that we gave them. Um, so when we, um, so some of the preliminary results, because we're only a couple of years in, um, have been that the lambs raised on dual purpose crops have been uh, four kilograms heavier at um, finishing on in autumn and on average and 2.4 kilograms heavier in spring which has been a um, really interesting finding but it needs to be repeatable. Um, so since the drought um, we've had flooding rains um, in, in Armadale and they haven't really seemed to have stopped ever since um, and that has caused a fair bit of issues for us as far as um, putting in the crops. So the land that um, we have been using is great soil, um, but not great for getting machinery on. And so um, this year, we have got crops two years, but this year we were unable to plant. Well, we did plant, but um, there won't be a harvest because the, um, the crop is so ordinary. So that's a bit of a shame. Um, and that was not only from the rain, but it was from, um, so the mouse plague added to that as well. They'd like to eat all the seeds that we put out. Um, so the, I just wanted to touch on the autumn lambing a bit. So to, in order to achieve the autumn lambing, we used regulin implants, which are a melatonin implant that goes behind the ear of the sheep. Um, one per ewe and three per ram. And they're placed, um, placed 40 days before mating. And what it does in seasonal breeds, such as a merino, it tricks them into thinking that it's um, a decreasing day length. So they, it's tricked to believe that it's, it's mate, normal mating time for them. And we found that they worked extremely well. Um, they do cost extra money. Last time um, we bought them, they were $6.50 per implant but that money is made back really quite easily by the reduction in the um, inputs as far as drenches and, um, and fly treatments. Because the lambs are being raised um, during winter and autumn, uh, during winter and spring, they're missing the bulk of the worms and the flies. Um, their mothers do have to live through it all, but they're being um, sold off in January, February. And so they're, um, Basically, that one year we almost had organic lambs because they didn't need any drenches. 
Um, so there is a massive, and so also another um, upside of the um, Regulon is that it produces more twins. So um, the CSIRO flock has a, a very good twinning rate already, but um, using the Regulon, and it's a, a claim of the product, is that it um, produced a heap more twins. And we also had some triplets, which weren't necessarily wanted. Um, and this um, had a downside though, um, in that the mortality, lamb mortality, in autumn was much higher than in spring. Um, and we do very intensive um, lambing rounds and we're out there twice a day and we make sure that every lamb that's going to survive, survives. And um, so we had a mortality rate of 20% in autumn and 15% in spring. So that was pretty, um, pretty significant. And I think that's a combination of um, the extra twins, they're smaller, um, but overall there were more, sh more sheep produced. Um, and also the, um, the conditions. So uh, during winter, you can, we all know, that um, it can really just come through a massive cold snap. And so we had, we had a higher mortality rate due to that. Um, also, an unexpected um, result so far has been that on the dual purpose crops versus the pasture only um, plots, there has been, there is also an increase in um, lamb mortality. 21% lamb mortality in dual purpose crop system versus 14% on a pasture only. So it's quite um, significant and um, we don't really actually know why that is. So overall, the autumn lambing has really um, stacked up. Um, definitely using the dual purpose crops in combination with the autumn lambing has filled a, a, the winter feed, feed gap and, um, and has produced some exceptional lambs. So um, we do recommend it. So um, the dual purpose crop system has um, proven difficult for us up um, in our area basically because of the weather. So if you time it right, you've got your own equipment and you can really just get in there when um, the exact day that everything's right. Um, but when you're relying on contractors, um, it can be more difficult. <laughs> so, um, so that's all I have to really say. Um, any questions? I'm just wondering whether you may be able to use teaser rams to help bring that you know, for when you're mating in the spring to get the autumn lambing to help that. Yeah, so it, it is definitely a potential. Um, but in this trial, we decided to go with the commercial um, tested so that we could, you know, try our best to actually get lots and lots of, of lambs. But yeah, it could certainly be an option that a farmer could play with. Yeah. Jody, what was your uh, weaning percentage autumn versus spring? Um, it was... 160% versus 134 or something like that. The so spring being the higher? Uh, no. The autumn went the higher with the, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. Normally yeah. down here, you know, the autumn landings are a very tough one. Yeah. That, that's why I'm spring. Yeah, no.